On this edition of Around BCC, it's the second year of BCC's eHealth program, we get an update. We profile new members of BCC's student government, and we look at a faculty member whose focus is on a sustainable environment. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Thibault. We are in the final stretches of the 2012 fall semester at Bristol Community College. And that means we can actually start looking ahead, believe it or not, to the spring 2013 schedule at all BCC campuses. One of the, the great innovations that BCC has uh, been able to employ in the past two years is its brand new eHealth program. We've spotlighted it many times here on the show, but we thought we'd get an update on this month's program. I'm pleased to be joined this month by Karen Varrier. She's the director of the eHealth program here in New Bedford. And also by Sherry Caton. She is a student in the General Studies Health Science and hopefully soon nursing, right, Sherry? Yeah. So thank you both for joining us. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Karen, um, second year, second full academic year here at eHealth. Um, it just seemed like yesterday that we were doing the ribbon cutting for where we are. And this room actually is where it happened. Um, talk a little bit about the growth and how popular it has become here in New Bedford. It's been tremendously popular. We have uh, grown uh, in numbers um, and in reputation, uh, which has been great, uh, and also in programs. We uh, continue to add new programs as we see the need, and those needs are determined by things, uh, relationships with like South Coast Hospital and other people in healthcare fields. So there are genuine needs uh, that are out there. And uh, then we also know the needs of our students who need training so that they, and education, so they can work in healthcare fields. Mm. It, was, it was touted as a, as a public-private partnership, which it still is. Yes, it is. Um, but it, it's more than that now. Now it, it's another part of BCC, and I think that's important. There was a, a time at the beginning where people thought that eHealth was separate of, from Bristol Community College. It, it, we're all Bristol Community College, and that's important because of the opportunities that it provides students. Absolutely, and we've even uh, gone so far as to open up our classes so that even non-eHealth students can take some of the classes and they can see some of the facilities we have and then some do make a transition to be in an eHealth course or not. Mm -hmm. um, and we've even making some strides now to blend uh, the two buildings on the New Bedford campus as well. So there's been a lot of blending and I think that's been helpful to make us part of BCC. There are three degree programs currently yes. being offered here as part of the eHealth program. The uh, General Studies uh, Health Sciences, with which Sherry is sort of involved with right now, uh, and Occupational Therapy Assistant, which was here from the beginning. But obviously the big news this year was the growth in the nursing program. And um, we've got some footage of, of the facility upstairs. Um, the ribbon cutting was actually early December. Yes. As we taped this, we <laughs> hope it was early December. Um, and, and talk about how um, the nursing program is going to be a big impact for not only BCC, but again for the needs of the healthcare community here locally. Well, there's been a tremendous amount of excitement. Since we've come, people have said, so is nursing coming. Um, you know, BCC has a tremendous reputation with their nursing program, and that precedes most of the things we've done, and it has given a lot of credibility to some of our other programs as well. But to finally have nursing here is just wonderful, and I've been part of the construction process, and it has been tremendous. Some of the facilities, and as you go around, hopefully you'll get some pictures of that, uh, we have these uh, SIMS units that are amazing. They're simulation mannequins, and um, they are so lifelike that they mm. need to do less clinical time with real bodies because they have almost everything that a real body can do. They're computer controlled. Um, so the nurses are very excited about being here and having this um, kind of expertise and training on site um, to the point where some of the Fall River students will be coming here also to have the same equal opportunity of training. Um, but New Bedford as a whole has really embraced it and they're very excited about having nursing here. Now up until um, the growth of nursing here, um, I heard President Sprague say quite often that you know there were a thousand applicants for nursing and there were only 75 slots. Um, how many slots are, are additional here at eHealth? 
Yes, it has not just taken, you know, less, given us less. It's given us 24 more spots. Great. And we're also going to have another new cohort next September. So we'll have 48 students here. So that, and that'll be part of, um, it's the same sort of nursing program that is at the Fall River campus, is that correct? It's absolutely but, but it's, the but it's same. But got, it's got the technology advances that, as you mentioned, some of those nurses in Fall River will be able to take advantage of as well. And there is the e-learning piece too. They can spend less time in the classroom. Right. They can do that piece at home. Uh, but of course, because of the nursing arts and you know the need to be hands-on, there is still a great deal of time here. Let's talk a little bit about the other programs. Um, I guess let's start with the degree programs. How has the enrollment been for general studies, health sciences, and occupational therapy? Uh, well, um, general you know, studies is a, a great attraction for right. someone who, um, like our member here, are, are hoping to be in nursing or OTA, right. or also just undecided. They want to get a general studies and healthcare background, and then they can make other choices. So it's a great segue, or it can be an end in itself, um, if that's what they're only looking for that. But we offer many possibilities as electives, like taking phlebotomy mm -hmm. or taking EMT. So they can gather some job you know, skills even as they're taking general studies. Um, so that has grown as well, and especially because of the nursing now being here and some of the other programs. OTA has, um, has four cohorts now. Oh. Um, so we have the, the entire day program came here from Fall River right. because the facilities were so great again and appealing and it was easier for them to have all of their people in one place and they're going through accreditation so it's been a very exciting time for them. Mm. Let me talk to Sherry for a few moments. We, we talk about general studies. Uh, let me just first ask you Sherry, how, how did you find out about the program here and what interested you about coming to the e-health program. Obviously, you live in New Bedford, so right. that, that, that must have been a big plus. Yes. Um, well, one, um, convenience where it's, you know, like it's locally right here, literally five minutes away from where I live. Um, I was impressed with the building. I had come to the open house mm -hmm. and um, was generally, in, you know, just impressed and in, in, um, the way they offer the classes too, especially around our busy work schedule. Mm -hmm. You can basically pick and choose and, um, with the hybrid situation, um, you can turn around and with the hybrid, for instance, uh, you meet like for a certain portion of time in class and you do the rest of, you know, your, your studies at home in the convenience of your own time schedule. What was your interest in health, health sciences, health studies? Nursing. Nursing. So I wanted to turn around, instead of just applying directly into the nursing program, I wanted to get all the prereqs out of the way first. Mm -hmm. So when I do apply and hopefully get accepted into the program, keeping my fingers crossed, um, I'll, just, I'll just have the general nursing, um, the, four gen, uh, the four nursing courses to right. take and then I'll be all, all done. Right. Um, what is your, you talked a little bit about it, but what's your experience been like in this building and working with the staff and the people here at BCC? It's been great. Um, I was asked by Debbie uh -huh. um, last year to help tutor some of the students here. They were looking for some tutors down here right. in e-help. She had sent me an email and I had um, contacted her. We met and I actually enjoy um, being able to share my knowledge and my learning experiences with the other students as far as if they are you know particularly stuck or having a hard time um, with one particular subject. So. Now what was your educational and professional background before you came to BCC? Well, I've been in the medical profession for 27 years. Oh, good. Working in the healthcare profession for 27 years. So I've always, I don't know, ever since I was a child, always wanted to stick with, you know, healthcare, medical. Always wanted to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. So you're one of those, we talk about it all the time on this program and elsewhere, you're a non-traditional student. You're not a, coming out of high school to come in this situation. Yeah. So with, you must have seen the technology advances throughout the years. Um, how, how is eHealth helping you become a better health professional with the technologies they have here? Um, from what you've seen so far. Well, yeah, I was going to say from what I've seen because I really haven't been right. much with the, you know, the new technology, but I did get, you know, a tour of the new nursing facility and it's, it reminds me of just the hospital that, you know, hospitals that I've worked at. Yeah. It's just phenomenal and how, you know, like Karen was explaining, you know, the, this, this, the simulators and all that and how the actual patients in you know the beds upstairs and everything, what they actually produce you know like um, symptoms and stuff. So that way, as you're learning, 
you would turn, you, you turn around and um, would go and take care of that patient according to as if you were out in a real hospital. Mm. So it gives you basic, instead of being thrown into you know the hospital scene right at the beginning, it gives you that, that prep start first. Right. Karen, we talked about the degree programs, but right. uh, by my count, it looks like there's 10 <laughs> non-degree programs. And that also is a good supplement to the healthcare industry all these, these related services. So talk a little bit about some of those and again, the popularity and how well it's been received here. Well, one of our new programs is Farm Tech and right. um, that's just been great because we've actually redesigned a very great facsimile of a pharmacy right, right down to the label producing machine, um, the computers again, you know, the skills that people need so that then when they get into a clinical setting, they are ready to operate. And we're also providing clinical settings for our Farm Tech students in the pharmacies. So we've developed some relationships in the communities. So when they leave, they really will be able to work within a pharmacy setting. Um, we had before phlebotomy, uh, but now we've created a whole room with a, a blood a draw room and again all of the um, eye wash, you know, and all the things that you would really need in a real setting um, so that they, uh, they can also do the tests on the blood. Um, so it, they're just thrilled. I mean, they just can't believe their new space. And again, the better training because of it. Um, we've also uh, kind of uh, gotten together with some uh, South Coast hospitals for one, and we've got a new relationship where we're right. training some students at St. Luke's Hospital in Central Sterile in their OR. Mm -hmm. um, so even though we have some great facilities here, we didn't really prepared to build an OR. So uh, to go to their operating room and actually use the instrumentation and learn to sterilize in a facility is just tremendous for us. Um, and we've gotten a great relationship with South Coast who have identified certain things that they need in the field and retirement age of some of their personnel so that we can kind of scout out what's good for us to train our students that there'll be a job <coughs> at the end of the day. Yeah, that was an important announcement that was held, I believe, in the late this summer right. about the relationship with South Coast Hospitals to get the students, and there have always been a number of opportunities for the healthcare students at BCC to get the practical experience, but with this cooperation, it would dovetail very well into some of these some of these programs. Definitely, and you know, we're looking to add surge tech um, to that um, roster um, as of next September. So um, that's another piece that would be a South Coast relationship as well. Talk a little bit more about how the community of New Bedford has embraced this program. Uh, you, you know, we, uh, there's a new mayor of New Bedford that took over this this year, uh, Mayor Lang. The previous mayor was instrumental in getting this off the ground, but how's the, the buy-in been with the community and having BCC and this e-health program become part of the community? The new mayor as well as obviously um, Mayor Lang have been very pro-education um, and the new mayor especially, I've, I've heard three of his speeches and they've all been pro-education. He has actually come to uh, a WIB meeting that we have here which is a workforce uh, training kind of meeting to get people in healthcare set up to respond to the needs and to have grants uh, flow through that process. Um, and he, you know, basically said, what I'm talking about is already happening between BCC and South Coast, and this is exactly the kinds of things that he wants to see happen further in his community. So that's been very helpful. They have been very helpful with even construction, you know, trying to get permits through mm -hmm. and have things go through seamlessly. Their support has great because we have short windows in which we can build new layers, and that's been very helpful as well. And I think we've changed um, the flavor of the New Bedford community. Um, mm -hmm. I understand that when we started here as BCC campus um, 10 years ago, you couldn't get a cup of coffee. <laughs> right. And now there's just been, you know, so many restaurants opening and the arts have grown. And so we've been, we've been working with AHA Nights as well, you know, so that we can be part of the kinds of things that community has. This room is used oftentimes for last week uh, for a mayor's meeting um, <coughs> so that people have started to see us as using our space as well to grow and to be part of the community. And we totally embrace that because we know that we're helping their community grow in skills, but we want to be part of that community. What, I guess what's next for, for eHealth? Well, I think some of the things I'm looking at now, and we have something going on right now um, on Martha's Vineyard, is to maybe bring some of our programs on site. Um, because it's hard to catch the ferry. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on getting our CNA program to be taught 
partly here, but also to send someone to work in their health care facility there. Um, so I think that that's another way we can help the community, that if you have you know, 10 or more employees and your site is a, is a good learning facility, there's no reason we can't bring some of our skills right to your people. Right. Um, so I think those are kind of some openings that we're looking at. Um, mm -hmm. And the field is always changing, you know, the technology. Um, one of the pieces, too, we're adding is customer service. You know, um, for a long time, you know, you were just kind of a person in the bed. Um, and we realized that that has become, you know, if you have gone to any of the hospitals in Boston and Providence and, you know, even here, uh, they have started to concentrate on not just giving you some um, attention, but also to customer serve. And so we're adding a lot of those pieces to some of the teaching that we're doing with our students. If you want more information about uh, the e-health program here in New Bedford, you can go to the BCC website and uh, just do a search for uh, e-health, and we'll, we have the, uh, the URL at the bottom of the screen. So please check out the, uh, all the great things that are happening here at e-health in New Bedford. Karen and Sherry, I appreciate your time. All the best. Good luck in getting into nursing. Thank You'll you. do well, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I Thank appreciate it. Thank you very it. much for giving us the time. Thank you. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Welcome back. We're pleased to be joined by a new member of our crew, student correspondent Zach Karen, who this month takes a look at the new student government leadership here at BCC. It's a new academic year for the BCC Student Senate, and there are some new faces among the student officers. Jason Sadie and Aaron Martell are classmates from Dartmouth and got interested in the Senate through Jason's brother, who once served on the board. After their election, Jason was selected as the vice president while Aaron was tabbed to be secretary. They see the role of the Senate as a vehicle to promote worthwhile activities while helping students cope with life at BCC. Yeah, I want to raise awareness for the Senate. Um, we're right now we're, we're making a walk for muscle dystrophy. We want to raise money for organizations and we want to get a little more school uh, unity. Yeah, we're also doing a scavenger hunt for new students just to get pe uh, the students to like know the campus a little bit more, get the building, get the Senate name out there, get, just because a lot of students don't really know that the Senate is there. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we're there for the students, a lot of students don't know. Jason and Aaron are among several new members elected to the BCC Student Senate this year. I'm Zach Aaron. back to you, Keith. Thanks, Zach. We are already one month into the new college basketball season, and the men's and ladies' bees are striving for success. 2012 marks the fifth season of the revitalized men's and women's basketball program. On the men's side, coach Rob Delalue's 2011 freshman-laden team has seven players back this year, including three starters. He continues to push for excellence from his club, and that's resulted in earning the respect of the rest of the teams in the league. It's evolved to a point where we, every year, the, the rest of the league understands that we're going to be competitive. Um, to the point where a lot of coaches are, you know, coming scouting our games. Uh, you know, we've, we've evolved to a point where a lot of the schools in the area know that we are um, a college program, whereas before a lot of the local area high schools may not have known that we did have a program. So we're establishing that rapport. Um, still, and, you know, still building, you know, f going into year number five, we're still in the premature phases. Um, we're, you know, we're still very you know, young as far as things that we do within our school, with administration and understanding sports program, but it's, it's a build, we're building. Last year's Lady Bees were hampered by a limited roster, but this year, second year head coach Jenny Ozug has nine players to utilize, including three returners. The team has had some early season success, gaining two wins in the first few weeks of the season. Ozug hopes that will carry the club through the end of the year. It definitely helps to have a win under our belt, nice and early too. Um, hopefully that sends a message to some of the other teams that we're not going to be a pushover team like we've been in the past. I don't want to be that anymore. So I'm hoping that sends a little message and it boosts my morale knowing that what I'm teaching and what I'm trying to do here is starting to work slowly. It's taken me two years, but it's starting to work. Um, the girls I have this year are relentless. They, they don't quit. Um, even when times are, times are hard, we're losing, they don't quit, they're, they're always pushing. So that makes me feel confident going into the games, especially some of the harder games coming up. The BCC basketball squads play their home games at Bishop Connolly High School, and both teams are home 
during the early part of this month. Check out the BCC website for game information and if you can, come by and support the teams. Even though the economy is showing slow signs of improving, there are still many people looking for work. Many of them have made the decision to stop looking for a job and go into business for themselves. While the BCC Academic Center for Entrepreneurship can help those with a business idea turn them into a reality. For over five years, the BCC Academic Center for Entrepreneurship has been a resource for people who think they have an idea for a small business, but need help getting off the ground. Director Jeannie Gerard says anywhere from three to five people a week seek free advice from the office on whether they should take the leap to becoming their own boss. We have something for anyone at any stage in their career exploration or if they're really looking to start their business or if they're looking to get a degree. So we have our certificate programs, we have our associate's degree programs, but then we have our mentoring. And mentoring is just a casual conversation about what is it that you're looking to do and what is it you're trying to accomplish and at what point are you at. And a lot of times it is just that exploration phase. So it's just a nice casual conversation about what can we do to get you to that point where you can start a viable, strong business. We don't want to just start people in getting into their business if it's not going to be viable and feasible for them and match their personal and professional goals. So then we have, you know, then from that point, that casual conversation, we have different programs that we can channel them into. At a recent entrepreneur fair at the Fall River campus, BCC graduate Gina Perry showed off her wares as owner of the customized bakery, The Sweet Shop, located in Barrington, Rhode Island. She said her training at BCC helped her make the decision that owning her own business was the right career path. My husband is a contractor and has been running his own business for, geez, 15 years now. And so I knew what it was going to take to kind of be your own boss and be dis disciplined in that way. But um, it definitely is a little more work than I anticipated. I also have two young children. They have been wonderful. So the adjustment has been a little rough in the start, but now we've all kind of gotten used to it. And um, we, you know, use time management <laughs> skills to kind of uh, work ourselves, uh, you know, get some free time for ourselves on the weekends or during the week, but all in all it's been a lot of work but very rewarding. I enjoy, um, you know, owning the shop and um, being able to uh, put stuff out and, you know, work with people. It's been a lot of fun. The Academic Center for Entrepreneurship is available for consultation free of charge. Get started by contacting the office at 508-678-2811 extension 26 Nine, five. For our profile segment this month, we talked to a BCC biology faculty member who has a pass in promoting a sustainable environment and now lends his expertise to those who can shape it going forward. Hi, uh, I'm Jim Corvin. I'm professor of biology at BCC. I grew up in northeastern Michigan and uh, I grew up in a rural area, so I was always outside and I guess because there were a lot of frog ponds and a lot of forests around, I just naturally got interested in collecting and seeing what was around me, and that led me into biology. I was always interested in science, but I had a biology teacher when I was in high school, and um, he really stimulated a lot of interest in me. And uh, I think he scared a lot of students, but I really found him fascinating and I found the field and it was from then on I knew it was biology. When I graduated from high school I went to the local community college in northeastern Michigan. I finished there in two years with an associate in science and I transferred to University of Michigan in Ann Arbor and uh, finished my bachelor's degree there and just about the time I finished my bachelor's degree it was 1968 and that's when the draft became universal and so I was drafted into the military and was in the military for four years and after I came back from the Navy I uh, went back to graduate school and I went to graduate school in uh, at Central Michigan University for a master's degree and then I transferred to Michigan State University for a doctorate degree. When I finished at Michigan State uh, and got my doctorate I joined the Peace Corps and I went to Central America in the Peace Corps and I was served in Nicaragua until we were evacuated and then I transferred to Honduras. So I was in Peace Corps for two countries and uh, came back and got involved. I, I really enjoyed Central America. I enjoyed Latin America and 
So I got involved with a number of non-governmental organizations in development, and I've spent about 25 years in Central America since then, um, working in developmental projects, mostly field research and training, extension work, natural resource conservation uh, in uh, Belize, Nicaragua, Honduras, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Panama, and St. Lucia in the Caribbean, uh, and mostly doing field work. I went into teaching starting as an adjunct at UMass Dartmouth, and I taught there for a couple of years, and then I accepted an invitation to go to the University of the Virgin Islands in St. Thomas, and I taught there for two years full-time as an a associate professor of biology there. And after my two years were up there, I started applying, and this is in my area, and I always wanted to teach at a community college. I enjoy the focus on teaching and education. And I had done research for 25-some years, and I thought I wanted to focus on a different aspect of academia. And so I applied here, and I was lucky enough to get selected six years ago. Right now I'm teaching uh, Fundamentals of Biology, which is a two-semester sequence for biology and science majors. I teach uh, a plant science course, uh, Science and Care of Plants. It's a uh, course that's for non-majors and for people in the organic agriculture program. And I teach the organic farming, organic agriculture program, which is a uh, or sustainable agriculture program. We've recently, our close to having approved a two-year degree in sustainable agriculture at BCC that should be available also for students. Sustainability is a, is a concept and a requirement that we really need to pay attention to. It really applies to everything we do, no matter what profession we're in. And it's, it's a very fundamental thing that means we need to pay attention to what we're doing to our our environment and our economy and our society. And all of those things need to be uh, built into everything we do. Uh, I found it compelling because of my agricultural background in rural Michigan. And I've been in organic agriculture and did a lot of agriculture in Central America and saw that conventional agriculture isn't what it's going to be in the future. It's changing dramatically. The future of farming in this country, the future of environmental conservation is changing dramatically because of what we've already done and what the future is going to require we do. Part of the sustainability initiative that we have here at, at school is that the students were interested in pursuing things a little bit beyond just taking the classes. And they formed a, an organization, it's a student club, Seeds of Sustainability, and, uh, it's also SOS. And they have taken on a number of initiatives. The most visible one they have is they have a weekly seminar or workshop on campus to give practical information to people who want to learn how to live more sustainably. And so they've had, some are agriculture, some are in uh, housekeeping, uh, some are in personal care, some are in health and nutrition, and uh, they're all been given by people who specialize in those areas, who have experience in those areas, and uh, the participation and excitement about those workshops has been growing uh, now for two semesters. This is a great school to teach at. It's, it's really nice, and uh, the longer I'm here, the better it seems to get. The faculty here to work with are terrific. The, the staff that we have that support the faculty are terrific. The resources here, are, are very good. There's a lot of flexibility. We have great uh, freedom in developing new courses. We've been able to develop this whole sustainable agriculture initiative, form new student groups. Uh, anybody who has an initiative, who has a good idea, can do it here. They can get things started. It takes a lot of work and a lot of patience sometimes, but it works. And uh, it's just a really terrific place to work. That's all for Round BCC this month. We leave you with a look at the latest exhibit at the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery featuring photographs by Ron Barboza, spotlighting Aristides Pereira and images of Cape Verde. I'm Keith Tebow. Happy holidays. We'll see you in 2013.